gentlemen and tarnished of all ages, how do you like to wield a head on a stick and use it to absolutely demolish pretty much every boss in the game? That's right, today we're taking one of my conceptually favorite weapons in the game and pushing it to its absolute boundaries, its limits. Specifically, this is the Cranial Vessel Candle Stand, a weapon made from the severed head and helmet of a fire prelate. Containing his soul, it allows the weapon to let loose with powerful fire magic when you use its unique skill called Surge of Faith. This skill plants the weapon on the floor and fires out a circle of flame around you for great damage, and repeated inputs allow you to keep doing this animation as long as you can until one of three things happens. You run out of FP, and the FP cost isn't really high enough that that's much of an issue. You run out of stamina, which is quite notable as it takes quite a bit of stamina with each repeated input. Or thirdly, poise breaking. Of course, in order to take proper advantage of this ability, we'll be trying our best to cancel out that last condition, giving ourselves so much poise that most enemies can't really stop us from repeatedly spamming out the skill. Also, it's worth noting that this weapon skill was pretty significantly buffed in patch 1.0, and that's what has made it as ridiculously strong as it has become now. As far as PvP goes, this build isn't really made for that. You have 80 faith, so you can pile in any faith spells that you want to make it much better for PvP, but as for the build that we're presenting here by itself without any changes, the candlestick weapon's unique skill is incredibly close range, and it's pretty obvious that you're going to use it when people see the weapon in your hands, so actually hitting people with it is difficult, though it does a pretty good amount of damage if you do manage to do so. We will cook them, we will eat them. So, as far as getting big and poisy so that we can spam the ability as much as possible, we of course have the heaviest armor set in the game, as well as using the Iron Jar Aromatic item on any boss that it makes a difference on. With that, how does the build as a whole come together then? Well, first up is the Cranial Vessel Candle Sand itself, our weapon of choice, and you get this from the giant conquering hero's grave in the mountaintop of the giant's region from the imp statue sealed door within. Then we have a seal for casting our buff incantations, and because there are just buffs, you can use whatever zero weight seal that you'd like, though I recommend the air tree seal if you're going to use damage incantations as well as it has excellent scaling with our stats. Past that we come to our armor set for today, which is the full bull goat armor for maximum defensive prowess. You get this by completing the assassination quest for patches in Volcano Manor. Past that we come to our talismans today, and the first of which is of course the Shard of Alexander for an extra 15% damage on weapon skills, and if you somehow still don't have this talisman, you get it by going to three separate locations. First up, the desert where you fight Radon. On, then the lava pits just southwest of the Seethwater Terminus site of Grace on Mount Gelmir, and then finally from the Dragon Temple Lift site of Grace in Crumbling Faramazula, you gotta go on this short run to find Alexander one last time, and at the end of the interaction with him, you get the talisman from him himself. Secondly, we have the Fire Scorpion Charm Talisman, which boosts your fire damage by 12% at the cost of some physical damage negation. The loss of tankiness isn't a big deal to us, as we are super tanky by default, and the extra damage of course affects our weapon skill and adds it to its ridiculous strength. This talisman is found up in Fort Laid on Western Mount Gelmir. As well, you can replace this for PvP if you want to, its benefits are a bit reduced, and its negatives are enhanced, so you know, it, it makes it more difficult to recommend, but it is still reasonably good, and we are tanky enough that the actual negatives aren't that big of a deal anyways. Then we have the Aired Tree's Favor plus two talisman. This gives you a notable boost to health, stamina, and equip load, all of which are essential to this build, as the armor and weapon are quite heavy to have equipped, and stamina is the main thing that stops us from spamming our weapon skills much as physically possible. To get this, once the capital has turned to ash, go back into Lane Dell from the mountaintop of the giant side until you reach this open area, and then right over in this corner here, you'll find the talisman waiting. Then finally for our talismans, we have the Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman for a massive boost to our physical damage negation, aiding in our goal of tankiness. And to get this one, start in the drainage channel in the Halig Tree region, then go outside and follow the branches to some archways, to more branches, to more archways, to more branches, until you reach this roof that has a hole in it. Drop in the hole, and on your left is a balcony with a chest on it. Inside of the chest is what you seek. It's in this box. With that then, let's talk about our wondrous Flask of Physic. The first slot is pretty obvious, the Fire Shrouding Cracked Tier, as this gives us a lovely 20% boost to all fire damage, and you get this one from the boss located at the Minor Aird Tree in Northwest Kaled. Secondarily, my main recommendation is the Green Spill Crystal Tier for a 15% boost to your maximum stamina, allowing you to cast even more repeated actions of the weapon skill before you need to stop. To get this one, simply go to the Altar located beside the Minor Aird Tree in the Mistwood area of Limgrave. Then we come to our incantations, which are of course the classic buffing incantations of Golden Vow and Flame Grant Me Strength. Golden Vow is a 15% buff to all outgoing damage, and a 10% reduction to incoming damage for 80 seconds after you cast it. Just genuinely quite good for pretty much any situation. And it is located in the Corpse Stench Shack on the eastern side of Mount Gelmir. Flame Grant Me Strength is a 20% boost to both fire and physical damage for 30 seconds after casting, though it is a body buff that occupies the same slot as the Iron Jar Aromatic item, so you can't use them both 
both at the same time, and so simply, you have to consider the encounter that you are entering and the way that it plays out. If Iron Jar is useful, it will, if it will actually help you avoid poise breaks, then you want to use Iron Jar. If Iron Jar wouldn't do much, then instead just use Flame Grammy Strength for the 20% damage buff that it gives you. Past that, we have 80 Faith, you can use all kinds of other incantations that you choose, and at least offensively speaking, I'd recommend having a look at all of the fire magic options, as obviously we are generally focused on buffing fire damage anyways. And then for the Great Rune, I have a specific recommendation for this build, which is Radon's Great Rune, which boosts both your max health, your max stamina, and your maximum FP by 15%, which are all pretty useful to us for obvious reasons, and 15% is quite a notable buff. As for the order of operations here then, before entering a boss fight, you want to use your Great Rune, then drink your Wondrous Flask of Physic, then apply Golden Vow to yourself, then either Flame Grant Me Strength or Iron Jar Aromatic, depending on which you are using for the encounter, and then FP Flask, and get on in there and just start spamming that Ash of War off as much as you physically can. With that, then let's talk about our attributes, as this one is pretty hefty on the stat requirements. First and foremost, the weapon requires 26 strength, which is quite meaty, then we are aiming for 80 faith, as that is our main scaling attribute for the weapon skill itself. After that, we want a big old smattering of vigor so that we can comfortably take some hits without getting just instantly deleted from the game, with 60 vigor being the ideal number to go for. Past that, you need 52 endurance to be able to wield our weapon and armor together, as well as giving us a good amount of stamina for the continued spamming of the weapon skill itself. Then any remaining points left go into mine so you have more FP. FP isn't really the limiting factor here even at all, honestly, but it doesn't hurt to have a nice big pool of it anyways. And that just about does it, everyone. A build made to turn the cranial vessel candle stand into an absolute killing machine of doom, and I, I love it. A fun and silly weapon transformed into something that could almost be called overpowered, almost. I always love doing this with something most people would call a joke weapon, but this one has actually been a particularly potent creation. I hope you've enjoyed the candle stand of destruction build. I know I've quite enjoyed using it, and I hope you have a lot of fun if you try it out for yourself. Let us know if there are any other weapons that you'd like to see this done with in the future, of course, and we'll try to do our best to make them come into fruition just the same as this. Like if you like the video, subscribe and hit the notification bell for more, and most importantly, ladies and gentlemen, until next time, stay sweet. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement To take our insanity and turn it into entertainment Yes, I said entertainment twice To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world our stage Is, uh, goodbye